Okay, so um, we have a problem here. It says, given the differential equation, find a particular solution. We're just going to work this through. Okay, initial condition. All right, so what's the first thing that we can do um, to kind of move towards separating the variables? Put the X's and Y's on separate side. Yeah, uh, eventually, right? But initially, I'm just going to cross do cross product. It may not quite achieve um, uh, difference or uh, separation of variables, but it will get my DY and DX's in locked in the right slots. Right, so if I cross multiply um, y squared dy equals negative 2x dx. Okay, looks like in this case, after the dy and dx, oh, okay, yeah, this worksheet, yeah, let me uh, find that link. Uh, it's under um, Thursday, 2.18. Put that here. Hi, good morning. <laughs> yeah, we're just going through some differential equations right now. OK, uh, Evan, do you find that worksheet? It's a uh, differential equation practice worksheet number two. All right, so okay, we cross multiplied. We got our uh, dy dx locked in the right locations. But looks like our x's and y's are already in the right slots, so there's no need to divide anything. This is already separating. This is already a variable separated. But well, we can't guarantee this happened every time. But if we cross multiply, we can guarantee at least that these are in the right uh, places. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So then we take our antiderivative of both sides. All right, what happens on the left side here? Mm -hmm. We can do what? What does this become? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y to the. Yeah. Okay. All right, are you guys good with that power rule on the left side? Yep. Okay, right side, also power rule, negative 2x. Negative 2x squared over 2 plus c. 
OK, so you've achieved most of the points here. The rest is just clean up. Okay. We separate the variables. We took the antiderivative. The rest is just clean up. OK, so. Uh, what I like to do is I like to clean up the left side. Uh, if I see anything that I can quickly clean up, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I can multiply everything through by three just to, you know, as I see things build on the left side, I want to try to begin moving any coefficients to the right side. This will make things easier when I'm trying to clean everything up. So distribute everything through with three. The twos already cancel out. So we're left with um, negative 3x squared. You could say plus 3c, but we understand 3 times a uh, constant is just going to be a constant. All right, are we good so far? OK. Next step. We want to solve for C now or later. What do you guys think? What will be the easier path? Okay, so my reasoning is I see a cube root down the road, right? I got to take the cube root sometime to get Y by itself. And once that cube root comes up, then that C value is going to stuck, be stuck inside that cube root. It's going to be harder to solve. I mean, it's still doable. It's just a little bit messier. So because I see a root, a radical coming up in my answer, I'm going to solve for C a little earlier um, just to make it easier on me. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for C. Plug 3 in for Y, negative 1 in for X. I get 27. Add 3 to both sides, I get C is equal to 30. Okay, once I have my C, I'm going to replace where I initially made the substitution. Right? So I substituted my C x and y in this equation, so that's where my c is going to get reinserted. And now, now that I have my c uh, resolved, I can take the cube root and I'm done. I don't have to worry about um, working with anything inside the cube root because we've already solved for c while it was still relatively easy. Okay. All right, do we need to put anything in front? Do we need to put a plus or minus? No. Yeah. Good. Just even uh, roots requires plus or minus odd roots. Um, we don't we don't do anything outside of it. Okay, we're just going to spend time in this uh, um, session just doing a bunch of uh, scenarios of solving differential equations. So, any questions so far? Okay, I'm just going to pick a bunch for us to do. Everybody good? Um, when mm -hmm. it says the point like one three or negative one three, mm -hmm. how does that relate back into it? Or wait, you plugged it in. Okay. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I plugged it in early. Um, solve for C and then I took in then the cube root came on. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. All right. Okay, let's look at uh, let me put number two here. It's a little messier. Okay, y prime over 3 minus x equals 6y. And then our ordered pair is f of 0 equals 2. OK, 
Okay. What can we do first? Should you put the three minus x on the right side? Okay, yeah, we can go ahead and do that. If you want to cross multiply, that's good. What else? And then doesn't y prime become dy dx? Good, right. So we're going to just, whichever way you want to do it, we want to eventually get our dy dx to show up. You want to cross multiply again, or you just move that dx over. Either way, we want to make sure our initial goal is to get those dy and dx variables in their right places. It may not guarantee um, separation of variables, but at least we have a starting point. Okay, how are we doing so far? Okay, so dy dx, I like that. I like that being my first goal, trying to get those um, in their right places because every if I had to move anything else, I only have to move the x's and the y's. Right. Now, do we have anything that uh, needs to be moved? The 6y um, under dy. Mm, okay. Do we have to move the 6 though? Just why? Yeah. Now, if you move the six, it's not wrong. You can move the six over. But the problem is, if you move the six to the left, eventually it's going to have to come back to the right anyways. We only want to move to the left what is absolutely necessary. And also, the y is next to the six, but it's not connected to the six in a way that they have to stay together. The three minus x has to stay together, but the y and six can separate. Okay. Yeah, so these, you know, these kind of subtle things that just, the more you do, you'll be able to. But I want to kind of just... You know, point these things out. If you move the six over, it's fine. It's just that eventually it has to come over, come back to the right anyway. So let's just go ahead and leave it on the right side. Okay, all right, so. Now we should be good, right? dy dx in the right places, y is on the left, x is on the right. It's okay to have y in the denominator. We have a rule that can handle that. Okay. Just understand that a lot of students um, get a little nervous when they see this and they end up bringing the y to the numerator and then that's just, you know, um, they just end up um, starting the wrong, wrong place. All right, so let me put it in the form that may be more recognizable. So this is just going to be a natural log rule, right? What can we do on the right side? Separate them. Yeah, yeah, let's distribute. Um, you know, I said, I said to not distribute the parentheses through, but that was when uh, we were still separating the variables, right? We want to leave that three minus X together until we separate the variables. But once we separate the variables, we can go ahead and um, dissolve them, especially if we know that we're trying to do power rule. All right, natural log on the left, power rule on the right. Everything on the right side is in terms of X, so we do power rule twice. Okay, do a little bit of cleanup.
All right. Uh, so if you get to this point, you've achieved majority of the points. Uh, you separated the variables. You took the antiderivative. You got the plus C to show up. The rest is just clean up. Okay. Solving for C, solving for Y, and then um, deciding which order to do do those in. All right. Any questions up to this point? All right, let's reset. Let me um, put this at the top of the page. All right, let's see here, natural log. OK, so we have a C that we still have to find. Um, but what would be the easier path? Should we solve for C now? Or should we solve for Y now? Why? Good. Yeah, I like to solve for Y here. I know that I have a cleaner equation waiting for me at the end. So I'm going to wait till it gets to be a little cleaner before I plug in my order pair. But if I see a Y squared, then I prefer to solve for C earlier because I know the square root is going to show up and I'm going to solve for C before that square root. OK, so that's just something I preferred over the years, seeing, you know, working both ways and seeing which one uh, works out cleaner. All right, so we're going to solve for Y first. We want to we want this natural log to go away, so. We're not going to divide natural log. We're going to involve the inverse of natural log, which will allow that natural log to go away. OK or to be resolved here. Now we could separate all these, uh, but really we only need to separate the C away from the X's. So I'm just going to pick how I want to separate these. So if I want to separate the C away from the term, any plus sign in the exponent is going to turn into multiplication between bases. Okay, are we okay between these steps here? Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and replace e to the c with just c. Bring the c out in front. All right, so a couple of things we can do. We can drop the absolute value, uh, but that balances out with a plus or minus on the right side. Okay, the plus or minus goes away, and now we're staring at a much cleaner equation, um, general equation that we can work with. There's my general equation, and now I'm going to work in my order pair. And that will help me achieve my C value. Okay, so two in for Y, zero in for X. That zero is going to be helpful. E to the zero is one. So C is equal to two. Now that we have our C value, we're going to update our equation. When you plugged in, you go back to what you had before you. Yes. Or when you find this, you go back to what you plugged in for. Right, right. So um, 
we want to make sure that uh, when you plug in your order pair, make sure that you are. Yeah, you, this is the equation you're going to come back to. Yeah. Because you have all these other equations with C's in it, but those are not going to be replaced. We're only replacing where we started making the substitution with the X and Y. Okay. All right, let's do a. Okay, let's do a messier one here. Okay. Everybody good so far? All right, let's look at number. Let's, um, okay, so I'm jumping around on, on this worksheet here. This is um, off of worksheet number three in that solving differential equation um, handout that I included in the link. Okay, so here's the equation. OK, so we talked about um, before that if you see some strange variables, it's going to have to be paired with time. Right? And we, we, we want to treat time T as our X. In this case, W is going to be our Y. Right? So that means we, if we, as we separate the variables, we want the T's on the right and W's on the left. Okay, so if you don't see X's and Y's, it'll always be time T and something else. All right. What do you think we can do first? Or just that W prime, right? What can we rewrite that W prime as? Uh, uh, DW? Mm -hmm. Not the X, DW over D. DT, yeah, DT, there we go. Right, so we have our two, our two variables, our W and T. Um, uh, as you create your differential, it'll always be the dependent above and then your independent below. OK, so I'm going to take some time here to step uh, to go through my steps. Okay, I'm forcing these into fractions just so it makes it easier. When I do cross multiply. Okay, cross multiply, I want my DW in the right spot. I want my DT in the right spot. Okay, so at least we have these in the right places. Is there anything we need to move? We want W's on the left, T's on the right. Or are things already separated? OK, I think we're good, right? All the T's are together. All the W's are together. There's no need to divide anything over. Um, we already achieved uh, full separation. OK, so we'll move on to our integral stage. Okay, we'll do the easy side first. What does uh, W DW turn into? Any idea? Imagine this was X DX, right? If it was X DX, what would you say? Would it be W squared over 2? Yeah, yeah. If, if you see x dx, you would know it's power rule. That dx is just a notation. Same thing here. Dw is just notation. We're just worried about that w. So w squared over 2. Okay. Now the right side, 
a little bit more involved here. We got involved. Uh, we got to uh, include what method here to move forward. Any ideas? Would you separate it? No, we're not going to separate it. We're not going to separate. We're going to see if do we see a rule that this uh, can work towards. So here's a hint. We have a rule that looks like this. Yeah. So this is a messy problem, but if we can kind of imagine that this kind of has this form, and if we can if we can kind of visualize this in the future, we kind of have an idea how to move forward, right? The whole time I thought that was saying seconds because we're doing time. Oh, okay. Yeah, secant squared. Yeah, not seconds. Secant squared. So uh, yes, yeah, so we got to go through u substitution, right? What's our u value? Okay. And we know this will work out most likely because our u value has an exponent that is one higher than the remaining variable that's uh, sticking out here. Okay, so let's go through our steps here. Make our substitutions. Yeah, T squared goes away. Push the one sixth out in front. Okay, replace uh, or we'll go through our integral rule. We know secant squared becomes tangent. And then replace the u back in terms of t. OK. Any questions? Uh, are there any parts that uh, you want me to? Re-explain or go over. Yeah, so this is a little bit messier because we have to first off, I've had to uh, get used to the new variables instead of X and Y. We're dealing with time and uh, W. And also uh, this is a little messier. We couldn't just do an integral rule. We had to go through use substitution to get it set up. Okay, but now that we're here, we're going to go ahead and um, eventually we have to solve for C, but I'm going to resolve this too first. I want that left side uh, to be as clean as possible, especially if I see coefficients. I'm going to resolve them first. Let's just find it cleaner that way. So multiply everything through by two, at least get it down to w squared, and I can decide what to do next. Distribute two through, two over six is one third. Two times c, I'm just gonna leave it as c. So I'm one thing away, right? I know there's a square root coming up, but that I wanna, get to that C before the messiness of the square root. So I'll go ahead and plug in. Um, zero, negative four. And zero is my T. 
independent variable and my W is my dependent variable. That's the negative four. Okay, the convenient thing is tangent of zero is just going to be zero, so it's going to wipe this whole thing out. So C equals 16. Okay. This is where I plugged in my order pair, so this is where I'm going to substitute or rewrite the equation with my new updated C value. And now, one more thing to go is taking the square roots. Now we include plus or minus. But we have two solutions, but only one can be kept. And which one do we keep? The positive or the negative square root? What do you guys think? What do we use to help us decide between these two potential answers? Would be negative because it was a negative four. Good. All right. So. The way we find, the way we determine that is we look at the order pair, look at the y value, right? The sign of the y value is going to correspond with the sign of our answer. Yeah. If we see a positive four, then we would choose the positive square root, but we see a negative four, so we'll choose the negative square root. Yeah, this one was a little bit more involved. Any questions? So mm -hmm. the main like goal of mm -hmm. the differential equation is to find your y value. Uh, yes. Relative to your points given. Yes, that's right. It's, it's basically is to uh, goal is to bring a, something that is in the at the derivative level up to the function level. So we basically want all these dw dt's to disappear, and the way we do that is we take the antiderivative. Yeah. I think mm. we're finding like so many different things. Yeah, we are. What do I need to end with? Right, right. Um, and the good news is that even if you don't get to the end, even if you're here and you're struggling how to how to get from here to here, you've earned the majority of the points here already. So if you are struggling with the algebraic stuff or you feel like you're going to make a mistake, um, that's less important. Yeah. But. Uh, I think I feel like the most important part is can you get to this place right here? Okay. After this, um, if you're struggling, I'm always going to look for ways to give you partial credit, and also the points awarded for from here to here is is a lot less. All right, uh, we'll do more in class today. I also have a help session this afternoon. I'll probably pick. Uh, some additional problems for us to do. Um, but today, this afternoon, I'll also focus on solving differential equations. So feel free to join or you can check out um, the recorded video. And then tomorrow's help session, uh, I'll focus on more use substitution uh, with more um, integrals and maybe arc trig and um, 
more of the chapter 5.2, 5.5 quiz topics. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Hope you guys have a great day. See you in class. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you. Thank you. One second.